I, I want to ask you, what do you think of that rap, man? <laughs> Dude, I was laughing so hard. <laughs> Working with you, I felt I didn't even matter. Life's a harsh reality, no happy ever after. Oh, when you're going to your your chorus, I was like, Lord. Because <laughs> when I uh, initially pitched it to you, I was like, Yeah, I'm gonna channel Johnny emo, and then I was like, Yeah, I'm gonna talk about how hard it is to get into a relationship or something. I'm like, I've been in a relationship for like six <laughs> years. I was like, I, I need something more recent to channel. Right, then, right. I was like, yeah, you're not, you're not selling that to anybody, dude. Come on, man, get out of here. <laughs> part of the reason why I want to bring up, you know, not only to get like your uh, reaction, um, but uh, I, I kind of wanted to like just take a quick moment to talk about what rap music means to the both of us. Maybe not quite the same impact that fitness has had on both of our lives, but I, I think we'd both agree that rap music is like super important to the both of us. For the most part, rap music, I can't say was ever like didn't speak to me necessarily on like what they were going through or where they were at. Cause sure, I mean, obviously, that like when we were listening to it like in early 2000, it was like a bunch of like. Uh, you had like the gangster, <laughs> yeah, yeah. pre Mr. Worldwide Pitbull, Pitbull, right, right, yeah, it was just annoying Pitbull at that point, mm -hmm. and he's still annoying. But during that time, it was like, yeah, a little scrappy, and it was like really awesome beats, strong lyrics. I won't say like the best lyricist at the time, but like very aggressive lyrics that drew to me because like being like a little skinny kid, like I really like drew close to like yeah metal and 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 hard and hard rap when the beat would hit and when like the aggressive like tone and bite would come out in their lyrics and how they would like rap them is just like wow like this is awesome like tech nine and masterpiece stuff at that time was like yeah. awesome. from like juvenile and the hot boys like that stuff was like really awesome like in that like late 90s early 2000 phase like when i'd watch bt like for the majority of my day and at the time uh, I don't say I don't think this is a big part, but looking back now, I think it was cool, like their culture, where they were coming from, like how they aspired to like be in their uh, in using rap as their vehicle, literally to, you know, like you think about the early like uh, hot boys like stuff, like where it was just like a big block party, like it's just like whoa, this is freaking crazy. They just they got all these people, they just want to get everybody hyped up, and I love that. I love that. Like probably one of my favorite movie scenes of all time is like. Ferris Bueller's Day Off when he has like the huge like sing along like pop out out of nowhere and like the whole like city bust out into like a parade like I really love like that big group stuff so like that was pretty attractive in in a lot of those early guys because like Trick Daddy did that like it like really like hypes you up seeing that many people like like get to something and like I used to love that part of it I mean I just don't get it that often like the the that ISIS song they had like a cool like mm -hmm. part of it like that was like the background of the video like and it it like really feeds into like how I take songs on, even though it has nothing to do with like the song at all. You know, there's no, you know, the lyrics could be saying anything, but like just having that group aspect of the music video is like huge. Uh, but, uh, I do want to point out, like, since we're this duo trying to carry on this fitness business, like to me, rap has been like an awesome link for staying in touch. Rapping was like a cornerstone when I was like halfway across the world, you know, we'd be able to like take a track, do something on it and pass it back. And I know that, uh, Rewind a bit. Chris, <laughs> make the food go. go. You know, I, I just recorded something more recently, and I think it, you know it's possible that that phase is like out of you. But it does make me think. You know, that's that's a freaking decade ago, and not that I would ever pursue it too seriously, too pro. But just like with podcasting, or just right. like a lot of other aspects people have with like their fitness careers, or just like their fitness journeys. It's like if, if you would have like stuck with it, like where where could you be? Wow. Yeah, like to this day, I still don't know how to EQ a mix. Uh, like what if right. I did? What if I did five years ago? <laughs> right, right, right. What if you stuck with it long enough to like, you know, learn it and like really like take hold of it? Yeah, it's you know, it's it's always a what if situation though. Like hindsight's always twenty twenty, and and yet sounds good, but mm. obviously there's something in our hearts or our situations in life at that point that it just wasn't uh, convenient or wasn't rewarding enough or something was there that that just didn't uh, 
didn't play, didn't err on the side of like benefiting us enough to like continue on. And like, yeah, like you said, like I think about it all the time, like, man, yeah, what if I had kept on with so and so, or what if I'd stayed at that job, or what if I'd stayed at this? And it's like, eh, I wouldn't be who I am today, and I like who sure. I am today. So yeah, it, it's all good. It, like the rap stuff, like no, that's not out of me. Like I would most definitely rap. That we just were out of town all last weekend, so that's uh, the only yeah. reason. That's the only reason I was like, oh, I gotta submit this by tonight. I was like, oh no, it's not happening. No. I was like, I'm just gonna listen to John. 